minus 2 crank trigger setup. The 60 minus 2 trigger wheel has been at the heart of every electromotive system since we built our first user programmable ignition system almost 30 years ago. And we've been perfecting our ignition circuit around it ever since. The fact is that over 30 years after Electromotive first designed the 60 minus 2 trigger wheel, it has become the most common trigger pattern used by the OEM manufacturers. This is a heck of a testament to how ahead of the curve Electromotive's founding engineers were. To this day, Electromotive is building the most accurate, powerful, and reliable ignition system available in the aftermarket right here in the U.S. So whether you're using an Electromotive ignition or one of our TEC engine management systems, rest assured you have the best ignition system money can buy taking care of your engine. So please, take the time to watch this series of videos so you can get the best out of your electromotive system. Also, take a look at other videos and literature for more details about why Electromotive's proprietary ignition circuit gives our customers such a huge edge over our competitors. First, we'll discuss different types of trigger wheels. For some vehicles, such as the big block Chevy that we're going to be working on, a custom trigger wheel has already been designed and produced. You can see that here. This trigger wheel has been cut to the appropriate diameter, it has been lightened to decrease weight, and it has been slotted to mount on the existing holes on the factory balancer. For other vehicles where a trigger wheel is not produced, we, s we sell a selection of universal trigger wheels. Here's a couple of them you can see here. These are not all the trigger wheels we produce, but just a selection. As you can see, they range in size from very small, two and three eighths of an inch, all the way up to an eight and a quarter inch trigger wheel, uh, with a lot of different sizes in between. For most applications that don't have a custom trigger wheel available, one of these wheels can be used uh, and machined to fit the engine. A common misconception is that the size of the trigger wheel has anything to do with the accuracy, so that a small trigger wheel would be less accurate than a very large trigger wheel. This is actually not true. Uh, the trigger wheels all have 60 with two missing teeth uh, patterns on them. They're all going to go through, they're all going to go past all those patterns within the single revolution of the engine. The only difference that a big trigger wheel uh, and a little trigger wheel have is that the bigger the trigger wheel, the larger uh, you, a margin of error you have during the uh, installation process. There can be a little bit more uh, run out in the trigger wheel, there can be a little bit more uh, flexibility in the sensor gap. When you get into a very small trigger wheel, the tolerances tend to, be need, tend to need to be very tight. In addition to trigger wheels being added to the engine, there are certain engines that already have a trigger wheel that can be used installed from the factory. Later model engines uh, generally are crank triggered and more and more OEM manufacturers are going to the 60 minus 2 pattern that Electromotive pioneered uh, many years ago uh, and therefore are directly compatible with your Electromotive ignition or EFI systems. Uh, some examples would be vehicles using Bosch uh, Motronic systems, the new uh, GM engines as of 2006, um, even Honda, Hyundai, and many other manufacturers have trans have started to go towards the 60 minus 2 trigger wheel pattern. Now those are generally mounted in the vehicle or on the engine already, and in those particular cases you don't really need to do much but hook up to the factory crank position sensor. Moving on to the crank position sensor, there's various different types of those as well. Um, Electromotive's most common sensor size would be our half inch smooth bore crank sensor, and this is the sensor for which all of our brackets are machined to fit. These sensors are available in a Hall or Mag sensor type, Hall effect being a powered sensor that uh, is oftentimes a little bit more resilient when it comes to uh, interference and noise issues. Um, magnetic sensors are by far the most popular, uh, but the Hall effect sensors, while a little bit more expensive, are gaining in popularity. Uh, the other type of sensor that Electromotive sells is a 3 8 chisel. Uh, 3 8 inch diameter sensors were the norm when Electromotive first started 
back in the 80s, uh, and now the only one still produced is a chisel tip sensor. That sensor can be used with any trigger wheel, but is specifically designed for very small wheels with very fine pitch teeth. Uh, you need that chisel tip sensor to read the teeth properly. The other option with uh, crank sensors would be an OE sensor or an OEM style sensor. I've used uh, just a, an example here. Um, since most vehicles are crank triggered now from the factory, a lot of them, even if they're not using the 60 minus 2 pattern, uh, still have a sensor that could be used. Uh, generally, uh, to utilize a factory vehicle in an aftermarket application where that sensor was not original equipment isn't, uh, isn't very common, but some people like the flexibility of a sensor that can be had at the local parts store uh, as opposed to uh, the electromotive sensors that need to be purchased through uh, us or one of our distributors. Lastly, we'll uh, discuss the sensor bracket. Um, crack sensor brackets should be made of solid metal. They should be non-ferrous. Uh, generally, aluminum is the uh, preferred uh, sensor bracket material. Uh, sensor brackets, much like trigger wheels, are available in uh, u universal style. Uh, this is an electromotive universal bank sensor bracket. As you can see, it's a kind of a clean slate approach. You have a piece of billet aluminum here that can be cut and shaped to fit your particular engine. Uh, it has an adjustable sensor collar that can be moved around uh, once the bracket is fitted so that the sensor can be aligned with the tooth, teeth of the trigger wheel properly. Uh, as you can see, there's numerous mounting holes and the sensor bracket can be mounted both flat or on edge. There's also vehicle specific sensor brackets uh, such as this big block Chevy crank sensor bracket. It's been designed to work with the big block Chevy wheel on a Gen 4 big block. Uh, it uses a single bolt mounted to the t in place of a timing cover bolt uh, and ends up aligning with the, uh, with the trigger wheel as such. And uh, then there are complete custom brackets. This bracket was designed and built by our customer uh, for use with the big block Chevy that we're going to be working on because uh, it's a rather unusual Gen 6 block which does not share the same timing cover as the more common Gen 4 block. So while the custom trigger wheel will fit, the bracket would not. So as you can see, they fabricated a bracket out of um, some aluminum bar stock uh, and some aluminum round stock. And uh, that will be what we'll be using in our installation. Uh, another thing to point out is there's a couple of different ways of mounting or securing the smooth bore sensors that Electromotive uses. The most common is using a set screw. As you can see here, the sensor will go into the bracket um, and once it has been once it's been inserted, the set screw will hold the sensor in place. Uh, or uh, you can use a clamp style uh, mount, uh, which obviously you slide the sensor in and then the screw is then tightened and it clamps the sensor in place. Clamp style brackets should always be used on smaller 3 8 inch sensors um, and obviously there's nothing wrong with using them on a half inch sensor. Uh, they tend to be a little bit more complex to produce but uh, both methods will work uh, well. At this point we can go ahead and move on to fitting these parts to the, to the engine that we're going to be working on today. Before we get to mounting any of our components, the first thing we need to do is make sure the engine has been set to top dead center. This is because alignment of the wheel and sensor need to be done while the engine is at TDC to ensure proper timing of the ignition system. should about put us dead on. After we've set the motor to TDC, the next step is to mount the bracket. In order to mount the wheel properly, the sensor will need to be in place to allow for proper alignment. When mounting the bracket, 
and fitting the sensor, make sure to pay attention to any clearance issues that may arise from belts or other moving parts. Also, try to make sure that the bracket and the sensor are not located too close to any noise generating devices, such as the starter, the alternator, or other electric motors. If you do not have the option of keeping your sensor away from noise, a Hall Effect sensor should be used. Now when putting in the sensor, you don't necessarily need to tighten it. Just have it in a have it in nice and snug so that you can use it for your trigger wheel alignment purposes. Once the bracket's installed and the sensor's loosely fitted, test with the trigger wheel to make sure it aligns properly. You should already know what tooth you will be using for your TDC alignment. In the case of our big block, we'll be using the 13th tooth after the missing tooth section. To make it easier on you, make sure you mark the teeth on the wheel before you go to test fit it. It'll make it much easier to line up if you don't have to count the teeth on the wheel while you're trying to hold it in place. As you can see on our wheel, we've, we've marked the 13th tooth on both sides in case we have to flip the wheel over to get proper alignment. Like with the bracket, Make sure you don't have any clearance issues with the wheel once it's in place. This includes any other metal that may have false triggered the sensor. Remember, the low point between the teeth should not be lower than the mounting surface on the pulley or the balancer. And that looks like it's going to line up just about perfect. Now that we've determined that the trigger wheel lines up, we can go ahead and mount it permanently. In the case of our big block, we'll also be reinstalling the pulley assembly. As with most aftermarket parts, like with this pulley, make sure that the fitment of the trigger wheel is still good. We noticed that our pulley was a bit more dished in the rear than the stock one. So we added some washers in the rear to ensure that the trigger wheel didn't bow when we reinstalled it. And that should about do it. Now that the wheel is permanently mounted, we can secure our sensor. This will require a feeler gauge to set the air gap. If you're using a new style electromotive trigger wheel and a half inch sensor, the rule of thumb is ten thousandths of an inch for every inch of trigger wheel diameter. If you're using a three eighths inch sensor or an old style electromotive trigger wheel, the rule of thumb is five thousandths of an inch per inch of wheel diameter. 
for the sensor. So there you have it. The crank trigger wheel is installed and ready to go. Now we can move on to mounting and wiring the rest of the system.